In this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install, and build a simple model for simulation software called Arena. Welcome to the simulation channel. My name is JP. Today, I'm going to show you how I download and install Arena. So here on Google, I just type in the simulation Arena download. Right? So Arena is currently owned by Rockwell Automation. If you come here, they are going to show you the steps to do that. Let's see. Download free, so here, download Arena software, trial student edition free. And don't want the cookies, so full functionality, no limitation. Oh, size is limit, but others are not. So if I could find a way to download it, let's see. So what they want you to do is to type in the information you have, and once you're done, submit. Once you're done, uh, in a couple minutes, you're going to see this email from Rockwell Automation. Here it shows Arena getting started with Arena. Getting started with Arena. Thank you for interest. Then to figure out which one you want to use. Based on my computer, I just picked the 64-bit. This is the file I download. Let's I put it in the desk on the desktop. And let's run that. See what it wants. Okay, a folder. Media image. The other one really has nothing, so okay, auto run. I don't know when was the last time I saw something called auto run, but uh, recommended for you. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, it definitely not the. 30 seconds over the 25 minutes it was saying. So gonna take a couple minutes for you. You yeah and let's see, can I run it? Do you want to make changes? Okay, let's go. Microsoft Access Runtime 2013, but today it's 2021, well, this year. We are only eight years behind, don't worry. If this is an evaluation, that's me, I'm not a student. Standard, okay. The interface sure look old school. Then let's see what it's gonna give us. Yeah, it's, it's not meter time, just sparkling water. Okay, complete. Let's check it out. Okay, let's check it out. Uh, successful finish. Give me the release note. Yeah, I don't need that. Okay, so 
Star Dean Lab Arena. Arena? 2020. Evaluation mode. And okay, let it run through. This is actually interesting. New interface since last time I checked. Discrete process, decision. Let's see. So this is more the what we call process. We have the this is actually new to me. Uh, last time I checked, they kind of keep the same interface for about 15 years. And this is definitely fun, like the upgrade. Although still considered to be old school interface. So what I'm gonna do now, let's try something. All right, let's do a MM1Q in system. It's more the person arrival with the exponential processing time and single Q, that's what the MM1 stands for. Let's try that, see if I can get it correct. Three. So start with create, we're gonna bring in some kind of entity Right, per arrival and first creation, but double click here shows the create one and the T1 random exponential. You can do expression, but so let's say one per hour entity per hour. Okay, per arrival, first creation at time zero, it will keep going since there's no end. Then let's do the process. And now it's a little small. How do I add this without a mouse? How do I zoom in? So just trying to match the recording quality. You could see here, zoom in. Okay, create process. So what's in the process? You do it in two ways. One, there's a quick table each thing. You can type in what you want, parameters or no, let's see. Delay. Uh, Sys delay release. That means there is a queue. It comes in. Process, then release. And add a resource. Source 1. It's more generic. Same as for the process design. So, 1, 1. Okay. And see triangular. Uh, just to make it interesting let's do exponential distribution as well in here once i click exponential and mean the unit there is hour so all this really haven't changed since the first time i learned which was early 2000 you can type in the common so people know what happened in addition i think they still allow random number seed you can do this then they have a seed from a huge list. And if they didn't change it, the default is number 10. C number 10, that's all they pull from. Okay, so now this is that. You can see they add a queue there. Then let's create, design. What I'm looking for is the and how do we dispose that? Haven't really seen that in a while. Dispose, yes. It's interesting that seeing something that just the same logic since the first time I learned it a long time ago. Not sure if that's a good thing. Okay, so now we have everything set up. And once we are ready, the first thing we do, save it, save the model. Okay, I don't want something happen after, you know, spending two hours and then forget about it. Just model one here. Okay, and run. We need to do the setting. How do we set up the runtime? 
the wrong condition. Uh, there. Okay, this might be it. Yes. So well, like I was saying, nothing ever changed, but this is definitely new. Speed factor. Uh, Time unit per frame, I don't care. Just speed, okay. Uh, every time unit. So, run control, that's the other one. Uh, pause warning, I don't. Between replication, okay. Okay, here is the really important part. First, you need to have the warn up period. For what I'm doing, I just say three hours, and how f how long you want for each iteration replication. Let's make it thirty hours. So first three, uh, let's make it thirty three. First three hours will become warm up and will run the thirty hours hours per day. So you can do the eight hour shift if that's what your situation is. And let's see what else is there. And Okay, file. How many replications? Let's make it 10. And I don't have input file, so it's all good. Uh, parallel processing. That's fancy. All right. So right now we have our model. Let's save it again and just hit the go. And they do have the application number down there running. Yeah, so, okay. Complete, would you like to see the result? If you click yes, you're not gonna like it. Cannot be reviewed. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, crystal report. Take it back, it's different, uh, but it's not working for now, but so what I remember, you don't need the, their output, their fancy report at all. What I like is the So this is the report where I put the files. And one thing about Arena is the model, the render number generator is strong. But the report is to me is a nightmare. And all we need is here, what's saying out. There's the out file. It's a simple text file. We can just use notepad. And there you have it. So in here, it's basically saying a number of things. When it was run, when it was, when it was ran and Okay, the time, value at a time, non-value at a time, and total time, what is the waiting time? All right, average and don't have enough sample, what's, that means insufficient. Maximum time, minimum and number of samples, they call it observation. Identifier, okay. So everything you need is really here for the 10 replications. In the end, they'll have a giant summary. So this is still small. So why is that so small? Let's try if I can change the front size. Scale. Yeah. So right now, this is already the text. Uh, yeah, it's already 175. And to make this To make it more readable, you could try to lower the resolution and see how it likes. So let's try this. If it's three, two, one, let's try something smaller. By doing that, I'm not sure what it looks like. Slightly bigger, but it's still terrible. So I'm gonna change back. Keep 
changes. So, well, I guess there are a couple of ways. Either get my prescription glasses, get a bigger monitor, or deal with it. Final thoughts on Arena 16.1. I used to be a Arena instructor, modeler. It paid for my education and lent me my first job. So looking at this again is like visiting an old friend. I was happy that this thing still exists today, but then it could be a lot better compared to other software today. So what I like about it, they still provide the training mode download. It's free. Tell them about yourself. They give you the link to download. And it's easy to use. It's really designed for non-coders to do that. Anyone know some about statistics or you work in the medical field, you can drag and drop and type in the numbers you want and start your simulation project. The user interface is there. It's designed like Excel. You can type in some parameters, get it going, do anything you like. Not super difficult. Most people can figure it out quickly. And so with the everything out there, free software, you see the R, Python, why would people pay for that? This is actually pay software if you want to do something for a commercial purpose. It's the bookkeeping ability. If you just want to generate a random number and do your thing, you know, a small scale, Excel will do it. But why paying for that? You've got tens of thousands of entities running around and you want to figure out the average time, do the warm-up period, and give you a confidence interval. This is the type of tools you're looking for. Then what I don't like about it, the user interface still look funny, although it's major improvement since last time I saw it. It still looks like it's stuck in a decade ago. And the front size is so small, we need to try to adjust the resolution for screen. And it's just funny to me. This is 2021, and we shouldn't have to deal with that. And the 3D animation capability. They claim it's there, but it's just not that good compared to other products out there. I'll just leave it at that. Then the output, the DB connection capability. Uh, it's trying to do the Microsoft Access 2013. I don't know, that might be the latest one they have, but that is just not, say, industry standard. And I'm glad they get rid of the output, the report thing, I never figure out what that was trying to do. Still, this, when I click to see the output, it didn't work. But the output file is still there. So, if you're someone trying to get into simulation you know, or coursework, it's a good starting point. You should download it, try it, see if you like it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.